Hey guys, so today's video I'm going to be sharing with you all the books that are on my physical TBR that are adult fantasy by women. I wanted to do a video on recommendations for adult fantasy books by women and I sat down and realized that I haven't read enough to do a really good recommendation video. I'm really good at reading fantasy books that are by women in the middle grade genre and also in the YA genre, but when it comes to adult fantasy, I clearly have not been prioritizing female authors enough. And I think that's because male authors tend to get a lot more hype in that genre and I've just been leaning towards reading those really popular books and that just needs to change. So from now on, I'm prioritizing reading female authors in adult fantasy over the males. I wanted to share this list of all the books that I have and if you have any recommendations that aren't in this video please leave them down below I would love to hear them. The first book I have to share is The Raven Tower by Anne Leckie. I know Anne Leckie's sci-fi series I don't know if it's a series or a trilogy but those books are extremely popular and well known I think they've won quite a few of awards I have not read that I do want to get to that series eventually but I picked this one up when it was on sale like last year sometime and I still haven't gotten around to it so the blurb says that for years this kingdom has been protected by a god known as the raven but when the people of the kingdom need their god the most he seems to have disappeared and then the main character in this seems to be the hero and he comes to save everyone but also to uncover the secrets of the raven's tower and apparently what he discovers threatens to destroy the kingdom i'm really interested in this this is also her fantasy debut but also it's a standalone this one's definitely going to be one of the first books on this list that i will get to the next book i have is the sword of kaigen now this book has been making the rounds on booktube in the fantasy community. I know my friend Katie from Katie Brightness Reads, I know Tammy from Tammy Tries to Reads, and I know Rue from Rue's Reading Corner have all read and adored this. What's incredible about this book is it is self-published. Even now with its rising popularity, it hasn't been picked up by a publishing company, but Audible have now made it into an audiobook, so that's awesome. I'm glad that it's getting the recognition, but also it makes me super excited to get to this. This book is a Japanese Japanese inspired fantasy. All I know about it is that it also follows a mother. I read the fifth season recently and I loved that one of the main characters in that was a mother. It's just such a different character to read in fantasy. Like I'm so used to reading young heroes on a journey to fulfill their destiny. But I also know that the magic in this is similar to waterbending. And this again is actually a standalone and I will be reading this in November. This next book's a little bit of a mystery book and that is The Poison Throne by Celine Key. Now, I just found this book at home one day. Like, I just, it came out of nowhere. Like, I swear I've never owned this. I don't know if one of my brothers owned it or my mum owned it. So I was, like, at first really intrigued by this cover and then I picked up the blurb and figured out very quickly that it was a fantasy book. This book follows a girl called Winter. So she's what's known as a protector lady. Qualified girl apprentice in a man's trade. Set in a fantastical medieval Europe. The Poison Throne is a compelling tale of court intrigue, which we know I love. And it's also got romance and adventure. That's all it says on the blurb. I'm looking at the publishing details and it seems like it's also by an Australian author which is fantastic because I need to start reading more books by Australian authors that's another area of my reading that is really lacking. I then have Empire of Sand. Now this book is set in a setting that is similar to City of Brass which is what initially intrigued me by this book. All I know about this book is there's again a lot of political intrigue. I think there's gonna be quite a bit of romance because the main character is put into an arranged marriage at the beginning of this book. There's also magic. I know the magic in this world is like forbidden. I really like concepts where magic is forbidden and people have to kind of overcome that in some way or keep a secret. It's just such a classic fantasy setup that I really enjoy. Okay, then we have three books by N.K. Jemisin. I recently finished the fifth season, like literally last week. It is my new obsession. I can't stop thinking about it. It is incredible. The fifth season is the first book in the Broken Earth trilogy. I own the next two books, book two, The Obelisk Gate, and also The Stone Sky, which is the last book in the trilogy. This trilogy is set in a world where the earth is constantly shifting and changing and causing super natural disasters which also causes a huge amount of the population to die. A lot of the supernatural disasters are actually triggered by people who have this really mysterious but closely tied bond to the earth. So when those people are experiencing some extreme emotion, whether that's sadness or anger, their emotional reaction also causes the earth to react. There's a lot of prejudice and oppression towards these people and we are following at the beginning of the book three people, three women, well two women and one girl who all are 
these people with these abilities and just how that kind of impacts their life and the bias that others have towards them and the treatment that they have and the kind of life they have to live. It is a lot more than that but that's all I'm going to tell you. I have no idea where these three books are going to take us but I'm so excited. I'm definitely going to finish these up before the end of the year. And then I also own The City We Became which is N.K. Jemisin's latest release. It just came out earlier this year. This book takes place in New York City and in this New York is an avatar. He's an actual person like not just the city and we are following the protectors of this avatar aka New York and what they get up to. I think this is just such an interesting cool concept thing. I'm really fascinated to see how that works and how just the whole overall world works. So does that mean other cities are also alive? Like I'm so curious to see how N.K. Jonathan does this. I know she's gonna pull it off. I, I mean I'm still pulling away by the fifth season. I'm sure this is also gonna knock my socks off too. Now the next book I have read before but I only read this book and I never continued on the series so I'm hoping to reread this book and then also continue on with the rest of the books in the series and that is Solace by Gail Carriger. I read this probably four years ago now and I loved it. This also has steampunk in it which I just loved. It's set in this Victorian London where there's like all these different supernatural creatures so there's werewolves, there's vampires. Our main character however is what you call a soulless which means she has no soul. I can't remember exactly how it works but I know that other supernatural creatures that would originally try and set out to kill or harm humans can't really harm her like some of them but then some of them can and also she's seeked after because of her unique state but this was just so fun so quirky if you love Jane Austen and like her kind of witty humor but you'd like a book that has a fantastical element or setting to it this is that book I brought this book recently and I am planning to use it for a video so I will be getting this one read quite soon and that is Ghost Talkers now this book is set in World War II and we are following this what are they called they're called the spirit corpse. So it says here each soldier heading for the front is conditioned to report to the mediums of the spirit corpse when they die so the corpse can pass instant information about troops movements to the military intelligence. So that just sounds so cool like it's this World War II setting that deals with people who can talk to ghosts. I haven't heard anyone talk about this I don't think. I found it because I was planning a video and I was doing research and I came across it and I was like this is everything. I'm very intrigued. I love books about ghosts. I want there to be more. I then have The Court of Broken Knives. Now this book follows a group of mercenaries who have been hired by this lord to go and assassinate this other lord I think who is oppressing their kingdom. It says in the back that it's a suicide mission so I'm guessing that the risks are quite great. I think when they get to the city that they're supposed to assassinate the leader of that things are not what it seems and changes their plans. I don't I don't know much about this but I picked this up on a whim because it was on sale at my local bookstore last year and just still haven't gotten around to it but I really want to. The next book on this list is The Orphanage of the Gods of Gods. Now this book I brought my for myself for my birthday last year, still haven't gotten to it. In this world the gods were all wiped out by the humans after a war between them and then we are following I believe descendants, I think they're like descendants of the gods and the humans who were kept in a prison. Yeah, so it says all the children have been kept in a prison known as the orphanage and they're watched day and night by a ruthless guard and then any of the children who do show any divine powers are and then we follow a girl who has just escaped the prison. I don't know if this is a standalone or a trilogy or series. There's a sibling relationship in this and I remember that was one of the key elements that really intrigued me about this book because I love sibling relationships and fantasies and also gods. I love reading about gods or like children's of gods. I think it's really interesting to have these young ones trying to understand their power. Okay then I have one of the queen's of fantasies books and that is Robin Hobbs Ship of Magic. I am going to try and make my way through the Farseer trilogy first which is the original trilogy in this huge epic saga I guess you would call it and this is the second series. Why I'm so excited about this book is it follows pirates and it follows these pirates who have these ships that have souls and they're alive in some sort of form where they can talk and have personalities and it just sounds so unique so cool. I really love companion characters that are like you know a ship or something that have a personality. I just think it 
adds this extra flavor and fun to the story. They're usually like quite comical characters. You get a good chuckle out of them. I've just heard incredible things about this world building and this seems to be the most popular trilogy out of all her books. Like I think she has like 15 books. I don't know how many but there's a lot. Pirates, talking ships, what more could you want? The next two books I have are by an Australian author. These books I've managed to find in a op shop which is what we call charity shops here. The first one is The Devil's Diamond and the second one is Battle Axe which is the first book in a trilogy and this one is a standalone I believe. So in this trilogy we're following a boy called Axis who is a bastard son to a princess. So he's sent to a battlefront where he must be under the command under his half-brother who he does not get along with but as he travels he meets someone that he falls in love with. Oh that someone is his brother's betrothed. Drama. <laughs> this sounds very traditional in its fantasy world and setting. I'm pretty sure this is an older book like I think it was written in the... Oh this was published in 1995 and then this one follows a monk who stole the devil's favorite diamond and the devil wants it back. <laughs> That's the punchline. Set in Europe there's a play don't know if I want to read that anytime soon. <laughs> Okay, it sounds like when he stole the devil's diamond, the consequences came to England and I believe like hell is now like in England. It sounds really, really interesting. And this is a standalone. This one's another one I picked up on sale about a year ago and that is God Blind. So once there was what's known as the Red Gods and they ruled the land in this world. So all the different lands in this world also hold a very uneasy truce. And the king that we follow, he's recently lost his wife. He's now leaving a land and he's going to be put into a vulnerable position because of the uneasy truth and there's like some territories where the truce isn't in place so that they can battle. Okay this one's another one I managed to find in a charity shop and that is Wolfblade by Jennifer Fallon. Now this book follows dwarves. I've never read a book, a fantasy book where the protagonist is dwarf. They're always like the side characters. So it's set in a patriarchal society we follow this dwarf who witnesses a murder and he's then chosen to be a servant to the last princess. I'm guessing there's going to be romance it sounds like that's what the story is set up to be this princess wants to redeem her family name and save their lost reputation but there's a lot of conspiracies that are being planned and put in place to jeopardize her and her intentions i've heard incredible things about jennifer helen as a whole i know she's like still writing and publishing really regularly i do see a lot of her neural books floating around but i definitely want to start here since this is an older book of hers this was published in 2004 and she's also an australian author i also want to pick up who fears death this is another stand learn so we love that this book sounds like it's not going to be super heavy on the fantasy elements it sounds like it's going to deal a lot with African culture and the main character in this is a daughter of Ray. Because of that, the village that her mother comes from and she was born into, they exile them and they are now wandering the desert. And I think as this little girl grows up, she learns that she has magical abilities that she inherited from her father and it's a little bit of a self-discovery sort of journey. So I think it's going to be quite a heavy book because it does deal with heavier themes but I'm very interested in reading this because this author is the author who wrote the Binti trilogy. I read the first book in the Binti trilogy and I really need to read the rest of them. It's just something I haven't gotten around to doing. As much as I love Binti I always want a full-length novel rather than a short story or a novella. I much prefer a longer book. I'm just really excited to see what she does in this. Now this last book I have read but I want to give it another chance. It's not that I didn't enjoy the story it's just I found the narration really difficult to follow and I know that if I give it another chance and do follow of the narration I will be able to enjoy it and appreciate it for what it is and that is The Road of Kings. I've heard that this series gets better as it goes on and that what's her name? Jen Lyons is a author that we should be on the lookout for because she's doing incredible things when it comes to a fantasy. This book starts off following Kieran and Kieran is in jail for something and he is retelling his story to his jailer and then part of this story is Kieran telling his story then his jailer telling his story and then there's like another narrative where it's like a Kieran from a different timeline. There is body swapping in this and a lot of interesting politics to do with families and and there's also drag. I can't tell from Katie from Katie Brightness Reads gave me this book and she also just adores this series and she seems to be falling more and more in love with it with each book. She says that there's also a canon polyamorous relationship that I think ends up happening in the third book but I think we get a real see of what's to come in book two and she also says that the second book is a lot less confusing. So the first book is supposed to be the most confusing of them all. So I trust Katie. I'm gonna give this another go. I'm actually hoping to read this within the next month or so and then hopefully read 
read the next two books, book two and book three, before the end of the year. That might be a little bit ambitious, but I'm putting it out there. Okay, so those are the books by female authors that are adult fantasy that I'm really hoping to get to. Not all of these I know I'm gonna get to before the end of the year, but I would like to get to them within the next year. Like, that's my goal. Also, please let me know if you would be interested in reading any of these, because I am contemplating making a Discord group chat where we can, like, read one of these a month. If you are interested, let me know, because I will do that. I think that'll be really cool to read with a bunch of people. I do often get asked to do buddy reads, and I really struggle with doing a lot of buddy reads these days. Just just because I have so many videos that I'm working on in the background with like vlogs and such it gets too chaotic too quickly but I do love doing them and I would love to do them more so if that is something you're interested in please let me know because that will be really cool to do so yeah that's it for this video thank you so much for watching and I really hope that you're enjoying whatever you're currently reading and I hope to see you next time bye